Okay, so this is a very, very weird one. I'm going to turn up the volume of the gameplay for a second so you can hear this. Don't worry, I will mute it for the rest of the video. But listen to this for a second. Hear that thumping? That is my heartbeat. Well, supposedly my heartbeat. When I was recording the video for... You haven't seen the video yet, it's going to be uploaded after this one, like it's going to be the next one to come to the channel. Taking down a level 4 control point and explaining some things regarding it. I actually had a glitch during it or whatever. But after that, I went up to collect all my loot, I went up to the top floor of this control point. I dropped down and it made the noise as though I was very, very low health. And I started to hear my heartbeat, it's kind of bugged and stayed there, like I've literally been sat outside the base of operations now for over 3 hours. But I didn't take enough damage for the heartbeat thing to actually kick in, I don't know where the sound bugs come from. And not only that, I haven't fully restarted the game, but I've logged out and logged back in, and it's still doing the exact same beat. And if I just show you quickly, I know it's off topic, this is about what's coming in title update 3, but I thought it was very important as I don't know if this is ever going to stop. I might have to mute every single video until the devs do a fix, or I'm hoping if I restart the game, I'm not doing it because of loading times and everything like that, I can't be bothered on going to bed soon. But I've logged out, and if we go into the base of operations... If you listen to that, over the top of the talking, you can still hear the heartbeat thing. You can't really hear it now, because I'm inside the vendor, but if I look around all this stuff, like I can sell all my mods and everything. Listen when I back out. Nice doing business with you. It just carries on. Like, what is that for a sound bug? I can just constantly hear a boom, 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 boom. It's fucking annoying, if I'm honest. But this one is new. I've even logged out and logged back in. And this thing hasn't stopped. It, it's like haunting me. I'm actually starting to get scared. But anyway, into the actual topic of the video, I'm not sure how many of you would have seen this, but I think it's kind of important to know everything that's possibly going to be changed when Title Update 3 comes out, and they release Operation Dark Hours, that's what the update is going to be called. Hopefully we'll get to see the raid, I'm not entirely sure. Later on today we do have State of the Game. I found out through someone in the comments, thank you for letting me know, there was a national holiday where the devs are based. So there wasn't a state of the game last week, but they've confirmed on the Reddit and I think on Twitter as well. I'm not even sure on Reddit, but on Twitter, they have said there's state of the game normal time, which is 4pm in the UK for me. But anyway, with the content, update 3 will add the first 8 player raid to the Division 2 plus the first classified assignment that is exclusive to Year 1 pass owners. Then we have PvP and normalisation changes. These changes are only for PvP content and it will apply to Conflict, Normalised Dark Zone and Occupied Dark Zone. So the normalising mechanics, the equipment and weapons will be normalised to gear score 500 even if your gear score is higher. They are respecting the rolls on your gear and that means when you had an item with a very high crit chance roll, it will be like that in normalised content. Skill power will also be respected, and when the mods are active in PvE, they will also be active in normalised content. Then we have some global PvP modifiers. The PvP damage modifier will be tuned down from 70% to 40, and that will bring the time to kill more in line to what you experience in PvE. In essence, you have more time to react. The skill damage modifier will be increased from 20 to 25%, so they do more damage in PvP. Overall, the encounter should last longer, and the skill should be more useful. Then we have some Occupied DZ PvP modifiers, lots of different random letters chucked in there. They've also added a specific Occupied Dark Zone PvP damage modifier. Currently it sits at 40%, same as the normalised DZ, but they have the ability to specifically fine-tune the Occupied DZ modifier depending on how things develop. That should also help to lower the time to kill in the Occupied Dark Zone. Then we have some PvP modifiers for weapon archetypes. They will add specific PvP modifiers for certain weapon types. For example, they can specifically buff the assault rifle in PvP now. That also enables for certain PvP balancing, because the damage of the weapon is overwritten by the PvP modifiers when you enter PvP content. There is going to be hip fire changes. In PvP, you will not be able to crit at all regardless of your crit chance when you hip fire. PvE is not affected by this change. And because I'm not a PvP player, 
I'm not going to cover everything to do with the Dark Zone, but there's a lot. There's loot changes, landmark cooldowns, Dark Zone NPC balancing, rogue loop changes, Dark Zone pouch increased, preventing empty Dark Zones. And I will go into that one because the Dark Zones ever since launch have felt empty. Probably because there's three different ones on this game. Everyone is used to Division 1 where you just have one set Dark Zone. But they plan multiple changes to guarantee that you encounter 12 players in a Dark Zone instance. So they are saying they are going to 100% guarantee that you are going to find 12 players in a DZ. They're reducing the amount of Dark Zone brackets to 2. So I'm not sure how many there were before, but now it's going to be set so that when you're in an instance, you're going to be with everyone below character level 30 or everybody in endgame. Then you have some more occupied DZ changes and Thieves Den changes. Then you've got a load of stuff on conflict. I'm not a fan of PvP that like I don't play much at the moment. I might get into it later down the line, but for now I stick to PvE. That's where I have my fun. And to start it off, NPC changes. The NPCs also got a general health and damage balance pass to make them less spongy in the higher difficulties and some popular gear talents less a requirement. That is literally all it says for NPCs, but to make them less spongy, personally, I don't think they need to do that. I don't think they should do that. As of World Tier 5, having a, like, my build currently is set to 495. It's an AR build that does very well. I've got rifle builds and stuff like that. I know how to make a build. I've got set gear to do so. But playing on story, normal, hard, and challenging is very simple. It's an easy thing for me to do with my build because it's synergized for damage and some health as well. I use unstoppable force a lot of the time. So I make sure my armor is as high as possible. I always have at least like around 50,000 health. But I don't think the NPCs sponge at all. Like you'll have the odd instance where an NPC is going to sponge some bullets if they're an elite. They come with a lot of armor and a lot of health. They're supposed to do that. But I do understand like heroic sometimes can seem impossible to get through. Like I've seen people take two hours to do one mission. And when the loot isn't any better, like literally you go from challenging to heroic. You're rewarded for taking out a boss one more high end item. If they reduce it, like if they do it just for heroic, fair enough. But if they do it across the board, it's just going to ruin this game. NPCs are already easy to take down if your build synergized is good. So if they go and decrease it, they balance it more as they say, then the general health and damage, the NPCs, like you could probably just stand there for five minutes straight with NPC shooting at you, you're not going to die. And then you go and put two bullets of an AR into an NPC, they're dead. Like a red bar will die instantly pretty much, even on challenging difficulty if they're messing around with this. But then we have other quality of life changes. The text chat will now lose focus after sending a message. Group tab will be populated with all raid members. They've added a neutral lighting set into all platforms. None of that really phases me. More ammo drops. It's been reported that there's an ammo problem in longer fights. To counter that, you will get more ammo drops from enemies when you are low on ammo. Again, it doesn't make sense to me because if you're a player that knows what you're doing, like I'm not saying there's dumb people out there that don't know what they're doing, but the more you play the game, the more you get experienced. And you will know if you've played Division 2 for a long time, because I hardly played Division 1. I got to the end of the story, barely touched any of the end game after that. But in Division 2, I think I sit at just over 200 hours. That was all done before Tidal Basin. Like, well, I played Tidal Basin, grinded out well tier 5. Haven't played much in the last two weeks. But you will know that specializations have a certain perk that allow you to regenerate ammo. There are certain scenarios where you're not going to be able to get ammo to drop off enemies. Like, I don't think ammo should always drop off enemies. I think they should just keep it how it is. Like, it seems to work fine for me. I'm hoping it works fine for a lot of you. But people are complaining there's not enough ammo dropping, so they're adding more ammo drops. Chances are you're never going to run out of ammo and that's just going to make the game stupid. Like if you've constantly got ammo flying in, dropping off enemies left, right and centre and you're playing challenging difficulty which is simple, there's never going to be a tough part to a mission. You've always got bullets to kill enemies, the enemies are going down easy, it's not going to be worth playing. Then they have gear score drop changes, you get items that are at your current average gear score and higher. Once you hit 500, all high-end drops you see will be on 500. Purples will be 490, that is their cap. 490 items can still be valuable for recalibration, deconstructing and selling. We all know that, but recalibration at the moment, like before they've messed around with that, 
is kind of pointless. It boosts your gear score by 15, well up to a max of 15. It caps out with some of the boosts you can actually apply to other things. Deconstructing, like, yeah, that's good. It gets you materials and everything for crafting and stuff like that. And selling, I've got like 400,000 credits. It doesn't phase me. I don't think they're going to release loads and loads of content in a short amount of time to the point where I would spend over 400 grand. Then we're going into the recalibration changes. It's been changed to allow for the majority of stats to be moved as they are from one item to another while making it less likely to reach the cap of the stat move. To achieve this goal, the recalibrated power is a separate number next to the gear score. As such, the recalibration will no longer increase the gear score of the item. All existing recalibrated items will have their recalibrated additional gear score converted to the new format. This should also help you to retain the values you want to recalibrate. So from that, they've said it's less likely to reach the cap of the stat that you move. Instead of just having gear score, we're now going to have recalibration score. And I think if I remember correctly, one of the state of the games, they mentioned that's going to go up to 100. I don't like the idea of it. I think it should be kept how it is. It should just be gear score because the game's already complicated in certain parts as it is. Like a lot of players struggle and sometimes it gets the better of me. Like I get really confused with some things sometimes as well. But now we have gear score and then recalibration score. Like, fair enough, it's going to be less likely to reach the cap. But at the same time, we now have to focus on recalibration score as well as gear score. Then we have new blueprint sources. You can buy blueprints from one of the NPCs, the crafting NPC. The blueprints from other vendors, as well as the weekly vendor, has been moved to the crafting NPC. Which, if I can work that out correctly in my head... When you go into the base of operations and you go to the vendor on the right hand side opposite the quartermaster, they will just have weapons for sale and that store is going to be empty in terms of what it is now because you normally get your four, like every four day items or however often it restocks. You get them items and you get the blueprints at the bottom. When they take the blueprints out of that, it's just going to be the items. So if I was to go in there now, I would have three purples and one high end. That's all I would see in the buy section. I think as well as doing that, they need to increase the amount of items that vendor has just so it doesn't look so empty and pointless to access. Like obviously you go there to sell your bits, but I mean the buy section needs to be filled out some more. There will now be two new weekly blueprint projects, one per settlement, so in total you can earn three blueprints per week from those. There's also a new daily project in the base of operations where you can donate crafting materials and then you can get a blueprint from that. I would just like to have the blueprints so that I can craft the extended 762 mag. I've done every single possible control point at level 3 and 4 trying to get the extended mag and I just can't get it. Like I get the symbol to say that I've got a blueprint but there's no name meaning I haven't actually got a blueprint. And I can't think of any other way to get blueprints so currently I still don't have the extended 762 mag. I think I might have to go through projects and stuff. But according to people that did videos on it, like towards the start of the game, doing the control points awarded you with it, that was the secret way to get your extended 762 mag. That's what I thought as well. But turns out I still don't have it and I've got every blueprint from control points. Then it goes into crafting. Increase the base cap for receiver components and protective fabric crafting materials by 200, meaning that their caps now start at 350 and end at 600 with all material capacity perks. So we're getting a cap of 600 on some materials, which is nice. Crafted exotic weapons will now always upgrade to the maximum gear score of the world tier they are crafted in when the upgrade blueprint is used. And then the last part, we have skill mods. New auxiliary battery mods. When you are not going specifically for a skill power build, they are introducing a new aux battery mod for specific skills. So you'll have the turret aux battery, for example. Aux batteries can be equipped in the skill mod slots and they provide you with skill power for that certain skill. This should allow you to get higher skill mods in the remaining slots working. So, as a lot of you should know, when the game first came out, it was a very high requirement to use some of the skill mods, and they recently lowered it, but apparently it's still not enough, they've got to add in these AUX battery mods. But it says here, this way you are sacrificing one mod slot for the battery, but you can get the high-end mods working that you would not have been able to use otherwise. So you get rid of a mod slot just to use a mod. Why can't they just lower the skill power required again? And it says you can find AUX batteries as drops, or if you craft a random skill mod, you can also get it from there. So that is everything this Reddit post says about Title Update 3. 
And obviously, like, PTS is limited to PC. I play on Xbox, so I'm a little bit salty. I can't get access to the PTS, so I don't get to test all the new things. But one thing I'm glad about is the raid will not be going to PTS, so everyone will get to experience the raid at exactly the same time, whenever it might drop. So that's going to do it for this video, that's everything I know and that's all thanks to a Reddit post, so credit goes to Reddit. Let me know in the comments what you think, are you excited for title update 3, will it get you back to the game because I know a lot of people have left. And what else do you think the devs should be doing? Let me know all that good stuff in the comments, I hope you enjoyed the video, thank you for watching.